Hello, lettering friends! I'm Sarah from Insight Insights, and my main goal is to help you create your unique lettering style to express your most confident self. In today's video, I will be reviewing the Kuretake Futabayori brush pens. I love these brush pens so much, and they're in a few of my other videos, including my new favorite brush pens video and my top three best brush pens for beginners video. I will leave the links for those below in case you want to binge them after watching this video, but definitely watch this video first because this is just about them. Let's get started with the color organizing and satisfying sounds for my ASMR loving friends. First, I want to compare a few similar brush pens in size at least. So the Kuretake Zig Brushables will be one I'm comparing, and the Tombow Dual Brush Pens, and then the Sakura Koi Coloring Brush Pen, and the Marvi Color In Brush Pen. So here I am just laying them out side by side so you can see the nibs up close. And the nibs all are pretty similar sizes, except the Tombow is quite a bit longer. So that's why I'm comparing these specific pens. So the first one you can see, this is the Futabiori. Like I said, I love these brush pens. It's great flexibility. You can get really thick downstrokes or a lot thinner because of the really great bounce. Next with the Kuretake Brushables, I really like these ones. These ones are waterproof and you can tell the black is a lot more saturated than the Futabiori because the Futabiori is water-based. Next is the Tombow and this one, because the nib is a little bit longer, you can get a thicker downstroke and it's also water-based. Because the Tombow has a longer nib, it is just a little bit more difficult to control right at the beginning. That's why I recommend the Futabiori to begin with because it's a little bit easier. Next, the Sakura Koi. I think this one feels the most similar to me, although the nib is slightly softer. The Futabiori has more of a bounce back, which can really help when you are just getting the hang of thick downstrokes and thin upstrokes. And then the last one, the Marvi Color In. This one is deceiving because the nib length looks the same as the Futabiori, but it's not. It's so flexible and you can bend the whole brush nib instead of just a section of it. So you can get a lot thicker downstrokes. So in comparison, you can see that they are pretty similar in size. Let's talk more about the Futabiori. One thing to note is that the Futabayori also comes in metallic colors for a really great price on Amazon. I compared them to the Karen metallic markers in another video and showed you what they look like on black paper, so I will link to that as well. I hadn't tried these pens as a beginner. I found them a little bit later in my lettering journey, and I remember the first time I tried them thinking, oh wow, I wish I had these when I was a beginner. And one reason is because they are great if you are heavy-handed or if you're light-handed. So right now I'm using them on my practice sheets for large pens. So this would be like for Tombow or Crayola Broadline. And these worksheets are from my Hand Lettering for Beginners workbook. It has everything that I wish I learned as a beginner. If you don't know where to start with lettering, this is the workbook that I recommend for you. I will link it below. With the larger alphabet, I do have to push a lot harder with these since I would say the Futabayori is best for more of a medium sized lettering, but the flexibility and the bounce is so good that you can get that really nice variation of thick or thinner downstrokes. And then I will switch to the small brush pen alphabet sheet and you can see that I can still get the really thin upstrokes and the right thickness of downstrokes. So if you are heavy handed, you can use these and you can just do larger lettering and you can still get the really nice thin upstroke. 
And if you are really light-handed, then you could just do smaller lettering with not as thick of the downstrokes because you don't have to press as hard. But the pen allows you to do both. As for the colors, I really, really like the colors. They're super vibrant. They're really pretty together. They are a really great price on Amazon for a pack of 12. However, the one downside is that the pack of 12, it does come with good colors, but it doesn't come with black. So if you really prefer black, and I personally, I always have to have at least one black marker in all of my sets, but the 12 pack on Amazon does not come in the black. And I haven't been able to find the black on Amazon for any good price. So I get the black ones from Jet Pens because on Jet Pens you can buy them individually. So I got a few colors from Jet Pens. That's why my set is a little bit weird because I have some of the colors from Jet Pens and then some of the colors from that 12 pack. I have given away some of those pens so I don't have all of the colors anymore, but I will link to it below so you can see if those colors are something that you would like or if you go on jet pens you can choose specifically the colors because they have every color that these Fudabiori markers come in. I just wish there was a better option of choosing a set of colors. And it is also important to note that these do fray although not as quickly as some so the good price is still worth it. And I just wanted to show you a few different ways that these pens can look in a quote because they are so fun to use. I find myself reaching for these over other brush pens frequently because the bounce is just so good. It actually makes you feel good when you're lettering. And when I asked on my Instagram page what other people thought of them, one person commented that they thought they were really bad at lettering and then once they tried these, they felt really good about their lettering because these actually help you with the downstroke and getting that thin upstroke. You don't have to work at it as hard as with certain other pens. And lastly, this is a test that I do for all of my brush pens. You may have seen this in some of my other videos, specifically my rainbow watercolor background video. These are water-based brush pens and so I like to use them as watercolor, but since I don't want them to fray on the watercolor paper, I scribble with them on a palette. And these brush pens did so well with this in comparison to all of my other brush pens. These ones were so vibrant. They were one of my top favorite for using this specific technique. In conclusion, the Futabiori brush pens are a great option and I think everybody should have them in their collection. As always, I want to thank you for being here and watching this video. I appreciate you so much. Thank you for subscribing to my channel. Let's finish it up by closing up the caps. And I will see you next time.